Today we're going to go over how you can take a boring shot like this and make it more cinematic in After Effects. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is analyze our clip and figure out what we want to focus on to make it feel more cinematic. For this tutorial, the clip we're using is a stock clip we got from Pexels.com. It's completely free to use, so if you want to follow along with this tutorial, we'll have the download link in the description. Okay, so let's play back our shot. And we can already immediately see that there is a ton of light coming in through the windows, so we're going to want to maybe add some light rays to emphasize that big pouring in of light. We can see that there's already some haze present in the scene, so we'll add a little extra emphasis to that later on. But the main thing that I'm noticing right now is that this shot is a handheld shot, and I want to stabilize this shot so that it feels like it was locked onto a tripod or maybe a dolly so that we can add some movement later on. So the first thing we want to do is we want to drag and drop our clip into a new comp, and let's rename the layer to Original. And then let's go into our effects control panel and let's add the warp stabilizer plugin. And first we'll let it analyze to see what adjustments need to be made. And right now we can see that it's done a pretty decent job of smoothing the motion out. But again, we want this to be a still locked down shot with no movement at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the result to no motion. And I'm going to set the method to position, scale, and rotation. And I'm going to keep the framing set to stabilize, crop, and auto scale. And then we're just going to play it back to ensure that the stabilization is doing what we want. It looks pretty good to me. I can tell that there's a tiny, tiny bit of movement, but that's okay. We're going to add our own camera movement later on. All right, now that our shot is stabilized and ready to go, let's focus on adding some dramatic light rays into the scene. To do this, the first thing we're going to do is create a new adjustment layer, and we're going to name it Volumetric Light. Then we're going to go into the effects control panel and we're going to add a tint effect and also a curves effect. Now you probably noticed that our scene just turned black and white. This is what we're going to use to create a luma mat to tell After Effects exactly where the light is pouring in from. So with our curves effect, we're going to drag the black levels until everything that's dark in the scene is pure black. And we're going to drag the white levels until the windows are pure white. Then we're going to set the adjustment layer blending mode to screen. And now that we have our luma mat set, the next thing we're going to do is add a CC radial fast blur effect. We're going to set the amount to 99 and we're going to keep the zoom set to standard. Next, we need to adjust the direction of the light. So we're going to click on the center position button. Now we're going to adjust the center position of the radial blur to the origin of the light source in the scene. In this case, it's the sun coming through the window. So we're going to move our center position to the upper left part right above the window. Then add another curves effect and create an S curve to add some defining contrast to the lighting. Now we're going to pre comp the two layers together. We're going to call it volumetric lighting. Then change the name of the main comp now to main. The next thing I like to do for a more cinematic look is change the aspect ratio into a more cinescope style. So go to composition settings and change the height from 1080 to 816. Now some people like to add black bars to the top and bottom. I prefer to work in an actual cinescope aspect ratio. All right, now that our aspect ratio is taken care of, let's add a little extra atmospheric haze to the scene. Here we're going to use the same technique that we showed in our video about doing an atmospheric fog effect. First, we'll create a solid by hitting Control or Command Y, and then we'll just title it Haze. In the Effects Control panel, add a fractal noise effect. Let's bump the contrast up just a little bit to about 103. Then under the Transform tab, let's uncheck Uniform Scaling and adjust the width and height scaling to taste. In this case, we'll go with around 640 for the width and about 410 for the height. Now we want to add a little bit of movement to the haze, so let's Alt or Option click on the Offset Turbulent Stopwatch and we'll add the expression Open Bracket Value, Open Bracket 0, Close Bracket, Plus Time, Times 10, Comma, Space, Value, Open Bracket 1, close bracket, minus time times 30, close bracket. And this will cause our haze to just move very slightly upward. We don't want it to be too fast. We just want it to have a little bit of upwards momentum. Next, we'll set the complexity to around 20. And then under sub settings, we'll leave the sub influence at 70. And we'll change the subscaling to around 67. Now we want to refine this just a little bit more and give the fog a little bit of a subtle rolling effect. So we'll Alt or Option click on the Evolution stopwatch, and we'll add the expression time times 30. And then we'll just play it back, and you can see that it just has a little extra movement to it. Now we'll set the opacity to around 80% or whatever looks best for you. 
and then we'll add a mask to the layer and we'll set the feathering to about 500 pixels to really add some tapering to the edges. And to finish our haze off, we'll set the layers blending mode to screen. The next thing we wanna do is add a little extra subtle realism to the shot, so let's go ahead and create some dust particles. Create a new solid by hitting Control Y and call it Room Dust. Let's place the layer under the haze layer, and for now we'll turn off the haze layer. In the effects control panel, let's add CC Particle World. Then let's move the layer further ahead in time so that when we play it back, the particles have already started producing. And then let's click and drag the end of the layer to refill the timeline. Change the birth rate to five and the longevity to 10 so that the particles don't disappear too quickly. Next under producer, adjust the XYZ radius parameters to fill the scene better. For this scene, let's go with around 2.125 for X, 0.715 for Y, and 2.4 for Z. Now we can see that our particles are filling up the entire scene in 3D space. Under the physics tab, let's set the animation style to twirl. Then we'll set the velocity to about 0.01. Let's play it back and see what we have so far. Right now it looks a lot like rain and that's not what we want. We need to adjust the gravity parameters so that our dust particles float. So let's set the gravity to negative 0.001 so that they just barely float up. And then under the floor tab, let's set the particle visibility to above floor. Now that we're done in the physics tab, let's go to the particle tab and let's set the particle type to faded sphere and then set both the birth and death sizes to 0.02 and keep the size variation at about 50%. Now all we need to do is change both the birth and death colors to about a semi-gray, more on the white side. All right, now we wanna add a little bit of our own movement into this shot. We're gonna do a dolly tracking out shot just very slowly to add to the drama. And let's set the haze and volumetric lighting layers to be 3D layers. Then we'll add a camera layer and let's turn off depth of field. We don't need it in this shot. Now with our haze layer selected, let's hit P for position and let's move it closer towards the camera in Z space. Let's go about negative 725. Now let's move our playhead to the beginning of the timeline and with our camera selected, let's hit P for position and let's push the camera closer into the scene on the Z axis. Let's go around negative 3045 and then we'll add a keyframe. And once the keyframe is added, we'll go to the end of the timeline and we'll drag the camera back in Z space about negative 3471 and we'll add another keyframe. Then we'll play it back and make sure that the movement is exactly how we want it. Then the final thing we want to do is we want to color grade our shot. Normally I would do my color grading after doing any compositing in a program like DaVinci Resolve, but for this we can do a quick and dirty grade right inside of After Effects. Let's make another adjustment layer and we'll call it color grading. Add a curves effect and let's tweak the RGB channels until we have a general mood that we're going for. In this case, let's make it a bit colder feeling. So let's adjust the blue channel up and we'll adjust the red and green down a bit. Next, we'll create a bit of a filmic look. In this case, I'll be using the Red Giant Film plugin. Now you could do this with Lumetri Color or LUTs to get a look that you like. I prefer this plugin because it has a nice set of film emulations and grain built right into it. Now it is a paid plugin, so if you don't have it, that's okay. You can use Lumetri Color and get a similar result. First in the Film plugin, I'll set my footage type to video. Then I'll set my stock types to a Fuji look and then adjust the color temperature, exposure, contrast, grain, and vignette to taste. Once we're happy with that, we can add a touch of unsharp mask to just crisp up the image a little bit. We'll go about 50 on the amount and radius set to two. We don't wanna to go too heavy with this effect because it can easily break things apart and it will look absolutely terrible. Then let's move the unsharp mask in front of the film effect so it's not trying to crunch up the grain. Now, once again, if you don't have the film plugin, you won't have the grain parameter, but you can add in grain by using the noise plugin built right into After Effects. You can set it to about 5% or whatever amount of grain you prefer. Personally, I don't like this look. I don't think it looks very natural, so I'm just gonna stick with the grain that's built into the Red Giant plugin. Then once everything's looking the way we want, we'll hit render and we'll have our shot. If this video helped you out in any way, make sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.